Regarding. Now you got the perfect three out for the Sharks, but the steal by Simmons. A chance to win the game. In on goal. He scores. Now, Andy Robb, Ken Prell, the Philly Hockey Guys. Uh, one highlight. Well, <laughs> there hasn't been a whole lot to pick from <laughs> over the last week. No, there uh, there really hasn't been. Uh, kind of a strange state of affairs with the Flyers right now, but of course, why we're here, we'll get to all that in a little bit. When you only score six goals in a homestand, that's, uh, that's pretty bad. Yeah, that's... Ugh. Wow, we'll have plenty of time uh, to get into that in a little bit. And, uh, of course, welcome to yet another episode of the Philly Hockey Guys podcast. I'm Andy Robb. I'm Ken Perel. What is this, episode... Uh... I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm still, like... Still... 100? <laughs> yeah, why not? I'm still feeling uh, a little bit under the weather. Still having... Oh, Jesus. Now you're going to die. I'm here. And I'm still having uh, I'm still having a little bit of throat pain. It's been great. I was misdiagnosed initially, where they said I have a viral infection. But then I went to an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and it turns out stomach acid burned the inside of my throat. That's always fun, and it's uh, it's pretty painful. Not gonna lie, I had a little bit of a head cold last week and still dealing with it. It's that time of year, you know. Yeah. At first, I thought it was just getting sick from watching the Flyers. Yeah. No, it was actually being sick. <laughs> he actually took the words right out of my mouth. I was actually just about to say the exact same thing. But uh, yeah, wow, not a whole lot. Uh, yeah, really. I mean, <sighs> what to get into? Well, first, why don't we get to the the big breaking news that isn't uh, Flyers related? Claude Julian. Yeah. <laughs> is now the coach of the Canadians again. He wasn't out of work long. Wow, that was a very... Were you, were you surprised by that move yesterday? And nothing surprises me in the NHL where the coaches are fired and let go and rehired uh, in no time. So, yeah, I, I mean, maybe a little bit surprised, but not not really. Should be surprising is now Dave Haxtell's name jumps up on the list of uh, potential coaches of uh, being fired. You know... Apparently, I guess, uh, who posted that? Was it CBS Philly posted that earlier today saying that, what is it, Bovada? Yeah, yeah. Hackstall is now 22-1 uh, to 1 to be the next uh, head coach fired from the NHL. He's eighth on the list. Wendy Ruff is uh, number one right now at 7-4. Uh, to four. He's the leader in the clubhouse. Well, I mean, to be fair, I, I don't know about this because it's like the one firing that nobody saw coming was the Ken Hitchcock one at that place well, in yeah, time. Well, yeah, no, absolutely. You're right. So what do you what do you think about that? Because me personally, I'll let somebody else speak for me. Uh, I don't buy that. Axel doesn't buy it. No, I don't I, really I, buy it either. I mean, he's eighth on the list, <laughs> right? And we've had we've had what three coaches fired within the last what two three weeks. So I don't think that's a real big deal. But again, it's a, it's a slow news day. I guess. Yeah, I, I'm definitely. <laughs> There's not, not a whole lot going on in the world no. right now, so we need to talk about that. You know, I, you know, we were just kind of taking some time, and we're like, you know, there's really nothing going on in the world, and yep. you know, may as well just keep busy. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'm definitely not going to put a lot of stock into that. I know that he's uh, kind of, kind of got a little bit of a split right now uh, in in terms of some things that he may have said or he did say, I guess. Uh, we're not doing alternative facts on this show. No, no. That he did say uh, that during... town hall meeting. Uh, what last week? Yeah, tell us. Not about a it. not a great idea. I mean, I, I mean, I guess it got a little heated when uh, the discussion about sitting uh, Shane Gosses fair and continuing to play Andrew McDonald. A little, it was a little heat, a little back and forth between the uh, uh, Flyers uh, season ticket holders and and the and the head coach. I mean, like I said, like. Some people can hit the panic button, but again, like we, we've said earlier, I mean, and it's not just us that have said it. I mean, other people have said it. You know, this season, probably going to be another bubble year for this team. Like, you know, they're not going to, the cup is not coming to Broad Street this year. Here's the problem with this season, and it was the same problem the Eagles ran into. The ten Who? Ga- the 10 game winning streak. Oh, yes. That changed expectations for this Flyers team. Every, because. Uh, the way they ended last season, they were very hot the way they ended last season. Then you figured, 
All right, they got this 10-game winning streak going on, uh, you know, early on in the season. They looked like they were for real, even though when you look back at those games now, you kind of see it was kind of all done with smoke and mirrors a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, they weren't really that dominant during right. that 10-game winning streak. Yeah. So, But it got everybody's hopes up, and you thought they were there. They were they were close. And uh, since that 10-game winning streak, I got it right here, I think they are 8-12-4 since the 10-game winning streak. Uh, I mean, it's been rough, ugly hockey. It's not even entertaining hockey to yeah, watch so I, right now. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 bland. It's like it's non-existent. I mean, there there's no, you know, there's really no forward presence. There's no scoring. I mean, there's just a, there's a definitive lack of it on f- five on five. Uh, I mean, it is just it, it's hard to watch right now. And then, and I think that's what really has kind of really ticked everybody off with the. Uh, the sitting of uh, of Ghost, you kind of need him out there if you're going to score. Understand, you know, uh, defensively, and he hasn't put up the offensive numbers this year, but you saw when he comes back, you know, they finally broke the, yeah, uh, the scoreless. That night. Yeah, yeah, they broke the scoreless drought at that point. But it's just, uh, there's just not a whole lot of entertainment uh, going on. I mean, when you watch this team. Well, I mean, when, you're, when you've got, you know, Haxtell saying that, you know, um, McDonald is one of the best defensemen on the team. You know, it's like, well, you start to question things just a little bit, but again, you're not going to hit the panic button. I was kind of surprised when I looked at McDonald's stats. He's only a minus four. Yeah. It seems like he is always on the ice when <laughs> when the other team scores. So I, I don't know how they're only a mi- how he's only a minus four. And and he's on the ice. He's he's second in ice time. Yeah, right behind uh, Provorov. Provorov. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Who scored the other night? Yeah, okay. yeah. So Good for him. I mean, if they can start getting a little bit of offense out of him as well, that would be that would be nice. Provorov, I'm uh, talking about. But uh, I guess really, you know, you look at the McDonald contract, and that's always going to make fans, you know, focus a little bit more on him. He's not never going to be worth what we're paying him. Yeah, what well, the certainly not. Him. So, but I mean, he's a serviceable defenseman. But the serviceable thing, is a good way is a good way to put it. Um, you know, I would say, but if adequate. I mean, if you're a, a contending team, it's not like you're looking and saying, you know what, the Flyers are on the outside looking in. Why don't we see if we can get McDonald off them? You know, nobody's nobody's thinking that. <laughs> Man, that's that's tough to that's tough to swallow. Right? Yeah, you know, yeah. knowing that because nobody is. I mean, the phone is probably not ringing for. Uh, for McDonald, though there has been a rumor about uh, people being interested in Mark Streit. Um, Which would make a, sense, because he's in, what, the last year of his, his contract. So he would he would essentially be a rental player. and He could make a nice depth addition to a, to a contending team. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. you know. Yeah, almost like, uh, you know, uh, teaming in a couple years ago. Not to the same level, but, you know, but kind right. of that guy is just a piece that you can throw out there. A veteran presence that uh, that is not going to go in and disrupt the locker room. Yeah, I mean, and he he's, certainly he's has a good guy. Yeah, he yeah. certainly has all of those you know those leadership qualities. I mean, that's why he still has an A on his chest. Yeah, in, in terms oh, and of the, and the Flyers me, Flyers media will uh, you know if they if they do trade him will miss him greatly because you can always count on him to give a complete honest answer. It's interesting that the comment that you made about, you know, how he interacts with the media and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it's like from a play standpoint, you know, I'm not his biggest fan, but I, I do really like him as a, as a person. I, I do. I like Mark Strait. I think he's a good guy. Yeah. But that doesn't really do a whole lot. Being a, no, being that a good guy doesn't, you know. No, well, that doesn't, uh, you know, help this team uh, really all that much right now is they're, they're, like I said, on the outside looking in, they're ninth. Two points behind the Leafs, and really, right now, only one point ahead of the Islanders. Again, it's going to be, you got 26 games left to go this year, so... Wow, already? Yeah. Hard to believe, isn't so, it? Uh, you know, that's what you were kind of hoping with this recent homestand, that they would uh, kind of catch fire a little bit. That didn't happen. They went 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. Um, Yeah, it's a, a very lackluster homestand. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's... Pretty obvious if you if you're watching those games, and now and now you head out to uh, you know a Canadian trip uh, for you know three games, and you, you got it. You got to get at least four points out of this. Yeah, trip. yeah, I would say so. And this um, trip is not as easy as as maybe it once was. You know, Edmonton's a lot better. Uh, Calgary is not that no pushover. True, true, and we might get to see you know. Part two of Brandon Manning versus 
Connor McDavid. Is that what the season's come to now? Yeah. Uh, uh, you you got to root for Brandon Manning. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they're putting out a 97-rated McDavid on NHL 17. Where's my 99-rated Brandon Manning? <laughs> next year. Because clearly he's he's superior. <laughs> They'll update it after the next game. Yeah, That's they probably will. <laughs> and then charge you like five bucks probably for it. <laughs> Thanks, EA. You know, I can't say that, like, I disagree about the direness, I guess, of the situation that they're in. They've got to get some points on this on this upcoming trip. I mean, yeah, if they want to make the playoffs. I mean, but again, even if they get into the playoffs, what's this team? Is it going to be another exactly. one and done? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, I mean, we'll see. I mean, you know, time will tell, but they, you know, it's it's up to them. I mean, you know, that's how it is. I mean, and so going back to something we were talking about uh, earlier, um, so you think that, you know, there's probably virtually no shot that Haxtell is going to get the axe at the end of this season? Because I really don't think so. I would be shocked. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Um, now, if Ed Snyder were still alive. And, you know, really in control of the team. Yeah. I think there may be a possibility because Ed was always quick to pull the trigger. He would, he, you think he would be very happy with what's going on right now? Uh, it's, it's yes and no. I think he would be more on the displeased side. Yeah. So, but I think uh, right now, you know, you have Comcast as the owner. I mean, basically, it's Holmgren. And Hextall running the team, so yep. um, and obviously Hextall is Hexy's guy. So I think uh, you're not going to see a move right now. I think most uh, people see where the organization is going, uh, the talent that they have down in the minors. I saw uh, Brian Boucher on uh, Comcast Sportsnet last week talking about how this team is probably about three three years away from being a serious contender for the Cup. Wow, three. Three, hmm. three seasons, and uh, can we can we wait that long? Well, I don't think we're going to be here that long. I don't think, <laughs> you know, I don't. I, I I really don't know. I don't know if we're even going to be here in three years. <laughs> Doing the show or just in general? Life in general, <laughs> you know that phrase "one before I die." Yep, it's starting to get a little more frightening. <laughs> It's a bleak future is what you're saying. Starting to get a little more <laughs> frightening. I don't know, man. I mean, what does that mean? If, if this team is three years out, what kind of decisions do you make? Is it is it time to trade Claude Giroux? Is it time to shop other players? I mean, you're talking Shen, about... You're Couturier. Ta- you're talking about three years away from now. I mean, obviously, uh, G's play has... Uh, fallen off a little bit over these last couple of years, uh, especially five on five. He just seems to disappear yeah. anymore. Um, Voracek uh, had a nice start to the season, but really I, dropped off. I, I, I mean, you, uh, you can barely tell when he's on the ice sometimes. That dad strength he has sucks. Yeah, <laughs> it's not good. Braden Shen, uh, you know, Again, only shows up on the power play. Basically, the only guy who shows up every shift is Simmons. Yeah, he's great. I, I mean, and I he's mean, well. Wait a minute. What about Vandevelde? Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you know. I mean, come on. He's playing in like every game. So yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but, but seriously, but I mean, yeah. I mean, and that's the problem. I mean, if I mean, if you're an opposing team, you look at the Flyers. You shut down those four guys, or try to shut down those four guys. There's no one else on the team. Raffle hasn't had a point in 15 games. Wow. Has it really been that yeah, long? Yeah. Matt Reed, before the uh, the goal he had a couple weeks ago, uh, it had been something similar to that where it had been multiple games since he had a goal. And and then you got Dale Weiss, why why he's still out there. And why we and why we got rid of Ryan White, I'll never yeah. understand because so, that was that was great chemistry yeah. for that fourth line. So and, thanks. And I and I think at, at this and point And Boyd Gordon too. Can yeah. we talk about <laughs> what a waste of space that yeah. guy is. And and you know what? I think I'm finally at at the end of waiting for Couturier to be be something. Wow. Really? I mean every year it's like, all right, this is gonna be the breakout year. Oh, remember in juniors, he, you know, he, this guy could score. He's got the touch. He can do it. You know, just got to give him the opportunity. Where is it? I, and that's another thing when you think about, like, all this stuff with these players. 
Who has the highest trade value? I mean, obviously Wayne Simmons, but like he's the last one out of all of them. I'd want to get rid of. Who's second? Who's second on that list at this point? Not not just talking as a whole from their entire careers or whatever, but out of the some of the players that we've mentioned: Giroux, Voracek, Shen, Coots. What's the next one? What's the second one down? I uh, I can't think of it. I don't know. And then the other problem you throw in that not only are aren't these guys producing. They got some pretty hefty contracts. And yeah. Jay and Jake are both in the eight million. Uh, uh, yeah, they're locked up uh, with, that, with what, that. Shen and uh, Shen's what six, uh, six million. You know, uh, Simmons has the best deal, and yet yeah. he's producing the most. Yeah, and he's not it's, getting paid the most. I don't so, get it. So I'm not saying at the trade deadline coming up that you move these guys, but this summer, yeah, you really got to start thinking about. Uh, does it make sense to keep these guys or move on, especially if you really are three years away? I mean, what is Giroux going to look like in three years? What is Jake going to look like in three years? You know, I mean, and that's been a consensus on, you know, some places that I've seen, like on Reddit. That, uh, uh, that yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. And I know we've, you know, we've ripped people for saying you got to trade Giroux and you got to trade uh, Jake and Shen and, uh, you know, over the past couple shows. and uh, But, um the the reality is that things aren't getting better for this team. Yeah, I hate to say it. You know, yeah. I hate to agree, but and and you know what? <clears throat> as long as we're having this conversation right now, let's go back to something that we talked about that wasn't on the show, but we talked about this um before off the air. I'm just going to say playing devil's advocate. Okay. Did the Flyers miss their opportunity to sell Giroux at his highest point? 2012. Yeah. Because you had Lavi and the best player in the world shit, and you had all that stuff. But at that time, he was playing out of his mind. Was that the time that we should have, you know, bit the yeah. bullet? If they would have traded him. In 2012, in 20, going into 2013. In 2012, and it, that would have been coming right off of, you know, getting rid of Carter and Richards, what, the season, two seasons before? I mean, at that point, you just can't keep resetting everything. Right. Yet yet you thought at that point that this was the right core. Well, it's now, what, five years later? It's perplexing (laughs) in in, in many ways. And And, and again, it's not like all of a sudden he's going to wake up and get better and be that dynamic leader on the ice and, and be that goal scorer and, you know, Put up 100 points, you know, that's not going to happen. I mean, some people even pointing out that, like, you know, has Giroux been playing considerably differently after that wrist surgery he had, like, you know, however long ago that was? I think that was, like, 2014? Yeah. Don't I hold mean, me to it. But. Yeah. But, you know, you look up and he still winds up and fires that shot, you know. But according to like, some people, I mean, it looks like he's experiencing a lot of, or not a lot, I yeah. should say, some but, degree of discomfort. I, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Uh, his skating legs just aren't what they were. I'll I, tell you what I'm tired of hearing from him, though, is uh, I got to be better. He, he said that, you know, at least a half dozen times this season. I was looking for the Andy Reid button. <laughs> we got to do a better job. <laughs> well, yeah. But dude. that's basically what it is. Stop yeah. saying you got to be better. Go out there and be better. And it's not all his fault, and we're putting it on him, but, I mean, the supporting cast has got to step up as well, but uh, I just don't know if the talent's there. I, and I know, and and believe us, I mean, you know, we've been doing this show for like a year now. You know that we don't, the last thing we really want, we would be pretty upset if, if Claude Giroux was traded from the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, oh, yeah. that would suck. The guy's the face of our franchise, but, man, in some ways, you kind of make a point, and, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, when... Uh, when I was coming in here and we we're getting ready to do the show yep. today, I wasn't I kind of wasn't expecting to have this conversation, so I'm a little <laughs> thrown off by it. So I don't really know I don't really know how to think about it. I know that people have plenty of things to say about it. And, you know, shout out to Reddit Flyers, people on Facebook, Twitter, stuff like that. I mean Yeah, I don't know. But well, we're not general managers, you know? No, no. But but something is broken on this team. Something's got to give. Yeah. I mean, here we go. From the you know the NHL manda- mandated uh, bye week that they put in this season, yeah. which was ridiculous. Hey, it's stupid. Flyers have scored an NHL worst 15 goals in 10 games, but they've only allowed 20 goals, and that's tied for second lowest in the league. So I don't know if it's a different focus, a more defensive focus. 
but the offense is gone. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's basically just... I mean, there's no punch. That's the thing. Yep. There's, there's none of that. Yeah. And now Konechny out for four to six weeks. Yeah, uh, that's so true. That, that's going to hurt. Although, yeah. I'm, although I'm, I am kind of looking forward to seeing what Jordan Wheel could possibly bring to this team. I yeah. mean, I'm not expecting him to come in and fix everything and all of a sudden... But what Stanley if Cup he can does? Tell. Well, if he does, then, you know, give him the MVP. We're going to change our name <laughs> to the Philadelphia Wheels. <laughs> oh, Wheels. I like that. Yeah, I like it too. The Philadelphia Wheels. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I definitely want to see what he can do. I mean, I think he should have had more playing time to begin with. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you no, know, I For a agree. while now. Like, what, wouldn't you rather have seen see him in the lineup than, than a, a Weez or a... Oh, gee, would I rather have an AHL All-Star or Dale Weez? Yeah. Or... With his giant five head yeah. that's bigger than Radko <laughs> Gudis's. Um, gee, I don't know. What a tough question. We'll be back after these messages. I have to think about it. <laughs> and we're back. I'm done thinking about it. I would much rather have uh, the AHL All-Star on the roster working with yeah. some of the young guys. But, you know, there's there's a lot of line juggling, too. I mean, Shen's well, one day on the top line, another day he's not. You know, I'm never one to hold back in, on getting on uh, Braden Shen. But, you know, I looked out there, and you look at who he's playing with sometimes, and it's like, oh, of course he's not scoring or doing anything. <laughs> he's the only one out there. Look, they just they just don't trade Wayne Simmons. That's it. Like, otherwise, I, what can you do? I, I know you, you say that, don't trade Wayne Simmons, but you're at the same point with Wayne Simmons right now that you are with Giroux maybe in 2012. So in a couple years from now? Are you saying, oh, should we have traded Wayne Simmons in 2017? Oh, don't put that, don't put that voodoo on me right well, now, I'm Ricky Bobby. I mean, I mean, that's... Oh, uh, I don't know, man. It, you it can't could, we do could that. be having a very similar conversation in a couple of years. Well, we're not going to be here that long. Oh, that's we're, right. I forgot about that. probably going to die. Yeah. <laughs> but his value is never going to be higher, right? Unless if, he has, unless, if he has a, unless if he has a better season next year. Yeah. I mean, but, well, oh, man. Wow. I wish we could, like, do this live in real time so people could, like, we could just do a poll and see what people think. Because, like, at the risk of saying something that, that either is the right or the wrong thing, I, I am I am puzzled. Yeah. I really am. Well, that's what I mean. This team is broken, and there's no easy fix. And then you have the whole, uh, we haven't even talked about with, uh, with the trade deadline. We've talked about these players, these forwards. Yeah. Um, but we also have the issue of goaltending because Neuwirth now is set to make his fifth out of, uh, fifth start out of the last six games. So, At, well, he's earned it. I mean, he's played lights out. Right. You know, I, I was listening to, um, WIP over the weekend. Uh, Macnell and Ray Dinger were on. Mostly it's football talk, but they were actually talking some hockey. And Ray Dinger brought up something that I thought was a, a comment that I thought was very interesting. What's that? A comparison. Okay. That Steve Mason is basically Sam Bradford. Good, decent, you know, going to, sh- you know, shine every Has once a crappy in a while. <laughs> going to shine every once in a while, but is never going to get you anywhere. And I thought that really <sighs> hit the nail on the head. Wow. Man. I don't you know, I... So there's what a, you're there's saying is... flashes of brilliance, but then... There's other times where it just disappears. So I thought it was really, I thought it was a really good point. So what you're saying is, from my question, is Steve Mason? When I asked, trade? who do you trade? Trade Mason? Would yes. you? I mean, if you trade, if you decide to trade a goaltender, because maybe you don't. Maybe you well, don't. Well, they're both free agents, at right? The end I of know. Year, so uh, I, I mean, I don't know who's in the market for a goaltender at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, if you can trade. You, you, you trade one of them and then re-sign the, re-sign the other. By and large, from a season-to-season season record standpoint, who has the higher value? But here's the problem with Mason. You can't have a quality backup behind him. When did Mason play his best hockey this year? When Neuvarth was hurt. Yeah. As soon as Neuvarth came back, all of a sudden, Mason's play was, was shaky once again. Yeah, he actually had me thinking about it, and then when you said the answer, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. So, I did forget about that. So, I, I mean, again, I don't know if he's, you know, uh, uh, I don't know if you can really go with him as your as your true number one, and I don't know if Neuvert's a true number one either, but uh, you know Hextall has uh, made it uh, a priority to draft goalies 
Yeah. Um, yep. And and you know Stallars looked great when he was up uh, for the couple games that he he actually got to play. So uh, maybe the Flyers are all right with goaltending again. Maybe we're talking again three years down the road. Oh God, that Stallars is such yeah, a waste. Yeah, I wish yeah, we had yeah, Bridge back. Same thing. Or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get you. Yeah. I get you. You know what? Honestly, realistically, if Hextall is is not going to stand pat at the trade deadline, I think more so than a forward, I see one of them, one of them moving Mason or Neuverth, and probably defensemen like Strite, like we talked about earlier. I don't see I any think, forwards no, going no, anywhere. No. I think that's all you can hope for at this trade deadline. I think if you see any big moves, it's going to happen over the summer around the draft. I, I mean, I don't know though. You never know. Hextall's phone could be blowing up with inquiries about Dale Weiss. <laughs> I say, sir, I'd like to add that Dale Weiss to my hockey team. I don't know why uh, the, the owner's a Kentucky colonel. I say, sir, we're going to have some mint juleps here. What a lovely hockey club you got yourself here. I'd like that. I'd like that Dale Weiss. Don't worry about his forehead. We got a nice large straw hat for him to wear here. I was thinking a cowboy hat, but okay, yeah, straw hat. Would yeah, work yeah. Too. I, listen, I'm not well versed on <laughs> Southern Kentucky colonels. <laughs> the only colonel I know is Sanders, because Sanders. <laughs> I know my Nuggets. Yeah, I, I do. Like seriously, like oh, God, what a! Can you imagine though if somebody actually did call and say, "I'd like Dale Weiss." Uh, sure. <laughs> I'd be like, sure. Keep the change. <laughs> don't you want to know what you're getting back? That's ah, all right. We're no, good. we don't need it. We anything. trust you. <laughs> I said, remember what I said the other week? Why don't you send us some of those little mini hockey sticks that they sell in the gift shops? I like that. I enjoy the little mini <laughs> hockey sticks. I would take that. If if you said, like, if you could take, like, some of McDonald's contract or whatever the hell Weiss is being paid and you would and you bought a mini hockey stick with every dollar... You'd be able to buy a mini hockey stick for every fan in Philadelphia. Just saying. And people love mini hockey sticks. But no, I mean, it's it's just like, again, like I'm going back to this Wee's thing, and I'm like, why did you let Ryan White go? Because at least he provided something to that team last year. But here's the thing. Uh-oh, either, here it comes. Here comes the thing. Either Either way. It's not going to change the fortunes I know, of this team. I know, so, that, I know that it's not so going to hinge to obsess, on Ryan yeah, White. To obsess on that is, is... No, but it's just like, what was the point? It just seemed extremely counterproductive. Uh, you're not going to get an unless, if him and, unless if him and White, like, you know, unless if White and Hackstall had a little thing together. I... Well, that's the thing. You never know. Do you... I was trying to think of a sound to play. Do you want to just play a sound? What sound sure, do you want? Uh, sure. Well, Hackstall wind. Oh, well, we haven't done that in a while. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> We're at the bottom of the well right now, friends, because, I, I, you know, it's like, what What can you say? I mean, you know, it's like just sit back and try to well, who knows? get maybe, through these last 26 games. Maybe, maybe they'll turn it on. Maybe they, yeah, I mean, they did last year. They did that push. Yep, That's what so. got them in. But then look what happened. We had bracelets being thrown <laughs> towards the end. Again. I'd rather them not make the playoffs this year in a way. Well, if they don't make the playoffs, then it's going to force Hextall's hand. Because then he's going to have to make some changes. Another question that we'll just speculate over. Would you rather have them make it this year, or would you rather have them just miss it completely? In terms, of, always, in terms, of, in terms of like revamping um, the roster or making some kind of changes, getting an early start and making changes for next year, what would you rather do? I'm always in favor of making the playoffs. Yeah. Because as 2010 showed, you know, you get in as an eighth seed or whatever, or a seven seed that year. Um, you know, anything can happen once you get in a plus. So I'll always take that. And Hextall is a smart enough guy to know that this team is far away from contending right now. So uh, I think making the playoffs is not going. He's not going to sit back and go. You know what? We're right there. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah. No, I always want to make the playoffs. Agreed. Um, yeah. I do too. Yeah, and um, I know that's the wrong thing that uh, Philadelphia fans have been conditioned to. The Sixers and Phillies and Eagles. Nobody makes the playoffs anymore. Yeah, <laughs> it's playoffs. It's all about rebuilding. Yep, it's all about the process. Hey, we don't rebuild. We retool. <laughs> isn't that what? Isn't that what Ed said? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So, <sighs> so they got a big, you know, yeah. big road trip coming up. Yeah. Uh, starts tonight in Calgary. Uh, what is that? Nine thirty is one night. Uh, yeah, that? that's got to be. And yeah. Uh, yeah, taking on those uh, 
Calgary Flames. I felt a little more optimistic last year. Am I wrong? Do I feel like, am I out of my league for saying that? The 10 game winning streak is what screwed everything up. I, I don't know. And, don't know. and the fact that they have, you know, they got shut out in back to back games and went, what, 11 periods without scoring a goal, you know, just last week. Is, for being professional really, yeah, hockey yeah, players, yeah. that is just, I mean, I there's mean, really no excuse. Yeah. I mean, that was, that. I mean that's, a, that's a kick in the gut. And, and again, these games have not been that entertaining. No, I mean, I've fallen asleep during a few yeah. of them. I'm so, not even kidding. And, like, I'm not even, like, I'm not even so, trying to be a smartass this time for once. So, like, you I know, but have. hopefully the other night, you know, uh, you know, with Simmons, you know, scoring the overtime winner, maybe that's the, you know, the little spark. God, he's so great. He is. He's amazing. <laughs> like, he, he's so great. Like, and good for him during that All-Star game. I know we talked about it before, but, hey, you know what? Oh, it was great to see. You know? Yeah, it was fantastic. And well-deserved. Well-deserved. Yeah. What do you think Giroux was doing doing during the All-Star game? Uh, I don't know, making himself a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, only time's going to tell, yeah. but, you know, the trade deadline, pretty much right around the corner. There's been some rumors floating around that, you know, some teams, like I said, are, are might be interested in uh, acquiring Stripe, but again... I think that one may have been from Eklund, so, you know. So, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Take that with several. Take it with... <laughs> I love this team. You know, that's why we still do this podcast. But right now, confidence is not very resounding in me. And maybe it's just because, you know, I'm still not feeling well. And it's been going on for weeks. And I'm just getting angrier and angrier about it. So, I... I don't know. <laughs> well, what? see this... <laughs> Oh, we, we, have we have a TV, TV on. and our radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. So sorry, a little this? distracted. Oh, more, uh, more fun things in the news. Wait a minute, the guy that they wanted for labor secretary is withdrawing his. Apparently, yes. Wow, dude, Car- Carl Junior. Dude, is, uh... when the CEO of Hardee's and Carl's Junior wants out, that's how you know it's probably a bad thing. It's not that surprising. They kept delaying his uh, confirmation hearings. So holy uh, crap! But, at first, I thought he died because it said uh, the nomination dead. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. They killed I mean, him. He wanted out that bad? Jeez. But, but just the nomination appears to be dead. At this point. Sorry. Well, no, back, no, no. Back yeah. to hockey. <laughs> that was weird. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe it's just because maybe I'm just out of sorts. Maybe because, like, I just haven't felt well, and I just want to feel well again in my throat. Like, I, it's making me more pissed off. I've been, like, real snappy lately, and with this team, I'm like, you know what? F this. In a way. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I think most uh, most fans feel the same way. Oh, and then I hurt my back getting out of the car when I returned from the doctor last week. How old are you again? 31. <laughs> and you know what the thing is? Speaking of which, a great segue you here. Like you're 80. Speaking of which, great segue here. I really hope my back starts feeling better because uh, we will be at the Wells Fargo Center next month, and I'm going to be. That's right. That's a couple weeks away. God, weeks I away. just listen. If anybody's going to play, and we're on different teams, uh, just don't hit me. <laughs> I haven't played hockey in like a year, and now my back's hurting, so I'm trying to rehab. Take them to the boards. No, stop. Check them hard. <laughs> Cross check. <laughs> Give him one of those brashear slashes to the back of the head. Kill him. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Let's 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 tone it back there, Skippy. Am I going to have to drive down there? Yeah, we're going down. We're yeah. going to do our uh, so the Wells Fargo Center takeover. I didn't know if they were sending a limo for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, not happening. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, there's going to be a guy with a Private sign. plane? Says, <laughs> Philly hockey guys. <laughs> yeah, right. If anything, it'll be a, probably a sidecar and a motorcycle. <laughs> They'll put us on one scooter like Dumb and Dumber. The little one will ride in <laughs> Philly on that thing. Down the turnpike. Oh, boy. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. That actually would be pretty entertaining. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to be down there March 13th. Um, we're going to be doing an episode of the show. Um, and, you know, we, we might just get to uh, maybe have a little, We're still trying to figure out how the show is going to go. But we might have a little thing where we get to, you know, meet and talk to different uh, Fly- Flyers fans and people that listen yeah. to the show. Maybe a kind of get to know you type of uh, segment. Yeah, I think that it's probably going to be uh, probably maybe a two, three parter kind of thing. Because I think, you know, we like to get a little bit of everything going. Yeah, we're going to record on the drive down, yeah. apparently. 
it's going to be fun. Yeah, no, it'll be it'll be a good time. We're uh, we're really looking forward to it. And uh, if you guys are going to be going, uh, we're we're tr- really very much looking forward uh, to to meeting people that have uh, stuck with the show for for a year. I think that's. Fantastic. And of course, shout out to, uh, to Dylan, of course, organizer of the Wells Fargo Center Takeover. He's on uh, Reddit 10 Philly fan. And of course, you can check out his blog, Good Night, Good Hockey. Should I do the radio voice again? Oh, absolutely. <coughs> you have to. Good Night, Good Hockey is a hockey blog that strives to be the premier site for casual fans to statisticians. You can visit their website at gnghockey.com, follow their Twitter at gnghockey, and like their Facebook page at Good Night, Good Hockey. Make sure to sign up for their newsletter as well. As Gene Hart would say, Good Night and Good Hockey. How was that? That was excellent. Thank you. That was <clears> fantastic. <throat> they still haven't asked us for our pictures for the newsletter. For the community newsletter. <laughs> I always love that. I love the newsletter. I don't even think we've signed up for the newsletter, so what? maybe that's why. Oh, all right. Well, yeah, we got to make sure we do that today. How are you feeling about tonight, and how are you feeling about this trip to Canada? Uh, I actually think it may be pretty good for them. Maybe there was a little too much pressure playing at home, so now the team gets away. Uh, they have some nice breaks in between these games, so maybe... You know, a little team bonding. Some yeah. questions I have is, like, what scouts might be there. Because I heard that at one of the recent games at the homestand, there was, like, scouts from, like, 12 different teams. Yeah. Well, there, 10 different teams, something like that. It was it was a relatively high number for scouts to be, you know, at the Wells Fargo Center to watch a Flyers game. Probably scouting the team the Flyers were playing. Now, they probably all just <laughs> came to town for the crab fries. Always a good choice. Yeah, can't go wrong. I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> I want to Look, say, I'm going to stay positive. And okay. I think, you know, uh, this team's got another run in it, and um, they're going to finish up like they did last year. Who needs to step up the most, do you think? Oh, the captain. It starts with the captain, ends with the captain. He's got to lead the way. And if he's not going to do it, then uh, this team's pretty much cooked. Got to say I agree. Yeah. Okay. Got to say I agree. Um, yeah, it, it, it does in, in many ways. It, in many ways, does come down to him. He's supposed to be your best player. He's making the most money on the team. He's got to see. Simmons is clearly your best player, though. Yeah, but. <laughs> Again, he, it's, mm. but if this team's going to do anything, it's got to be it's got to be Giroux. OK, uh, there's really not much room for me to disagree. So I'm just going to almost by default. Well, of course I'm, just not. I'm a to... genius. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe I'm overstepping it. Yeah, by default, I, I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go ahead and agree. I mean, you, you know, genius aside or not, you, you, I mean, it's a good point, and it's really, and honestly, it's the only point that matters right now. With, with my what you're point, looking at. I agree. <laughs> my point is the only one that matters. Well, then there you go. <laughs> That's a perfect way to end this one. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh boy! So yeah, nine thirty start time for that game tonight. Uh, make sure you're watching. Or not. <laughs> uh, Completely up to you. Who, who are we to tell you what to do with your TV viewing habits? Yeah, and that game is on the uh, the Comcast network tonight, so not Comcast, Philly. Either way, it's going to be blocked out where we are. So, hooray for color bars. <laughs> I love them. They're my favorite thing. You dig around enough, you find some good streaming sites. Yeah, yeah, you dig around enough, but, you know, at the same time, yeah. you should be able to watch it on the TV. Oh, absolutely. We've been making this argument now for like a year. And I don't think no one's hearing us. Nobody's hearing us. <laughs> All right. Nobody cares. We'll wrap this one up. Uh, hopefully the Flyers get a win tonight. Uh, we'll be back. God damn it, they better. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll try to do one next week, another show next don't week. Don't say that. <laughs> we'll be back in a month. <laughs> no, we'll yeah we'll we actually have some time uh, I think uh, ahead of us on our schedule uh, yep. for next week. So we should be uh, able to bounce uh, into the studio and get another show out next week, provided I don't die. Again. That's true too. Oh. And then if not, I'll find somebody around here to do a show with. So. <laughs> well, you can get the janitor. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Or 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 you know we still haven't had Angry Bob on the show. You can always have Angry Bob's debut. Yeah. Angry Bob is already uh, angry about the Phillies. <laughs> wait, wait, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Real yeah, quick, well, well, you got to jump in. Well, it's been pitchers and catchers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they have the World Baseball Championship or whatever. Freddie Galvis already hurt. <laughs> yeah. 
how did I miss this? <laughs> I, he he came in writing about it earlier to me <laughs> about it, and then I guess one of the uh, one of their young arms is already complaining about uh, soreness in the uh, shoulders. So who Nola? I don't know who it was. he did. He didn't remember who it was, but yeah. So the Phillies are already off to a a, a uh, great start, cracker jack start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do we really got to get Angry Bob on this show? Sometime? We do. We have to get him in here for like a minute, just so like we we. I just want to like let the mic roll and be like, go, go, <laughs> rant about the Flyers. It's pretty entertaining. He's going to need more than a minute. It's pretty entertaining, and interestingly enough, if you're from the Philadelphia area, you may or may not have actually heard Angry Bob before, and may have never known it on That's the radio. True. That's true. Yeah. Yep. That's it. That's we'll leave it at point. that. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Boy, right. <laughs> boy, oh boy! I, I'd like, I'd like to see a win tonight. Obviously, I, you know what? I'm going to make a prediction. Ooh, I why not? Okay, go right. Why ahead. not? The world's a toilet. And what's the worst? <laughs> what's the worst that can come by making a stupid prediction? I'm going to say the Flyers win tonight, three two in overtime. Three two in overtime. Okay, game winner scored by. Boyd Gordon from the press box. <laughs> He's just going to throw it. Woo! Now, I don't know who will score the game winner, but by default, I'll just say Simmons. Uh, I think it's time to uh, get back on your medication. That's true. <laughs> Where are my Flintstones vitamins, anyway? We're in a different studio today. so Yeah, no Flintstone vitamins in here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For Andy Rob, I'm Ken Prell. We are the Philly Hockey Guys. Thanks so much for listening. Yeah, seriously, thank you so much for still tuning in. We we really do appreciate it. And, uh, of course, uh, support all of, our, uh, all of our favorite Flyers publications, all the great websites, Twitter handles, and even other podcasts out there, too. You know, uh, you know we're all one big uh, hockey family here. So, you one know, big, happy, miserable family. Anybody that <laughs> takes the time to, to listen in, to tune in about the Flyers... You're a sadist. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You're you're a good person. You're a loyal person, and uh, we really do appreciate it. So, yeah, we'll be back with a with a new one soon. But like Ken said, provided I don't die. <laughs> if not, I'll be back. <laughs> you could play both of us. Exactly. <laughs> what would my voice sound like? Yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna comment on that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Dave. You're gonna get fired soon. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're fired. Okay. You're done. Let's right, get out of here. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, well, go Flyers. Woo! We'll, <laughs> we'll talk to you later. Oh, my God. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like the Philly Hockey Guys podcast page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Philly Hockey Guy. And subscribe on iTunes, TuneIn, and SoundCloud. <laughs>